This is the latest use of the same bit of hardware right here. This is the photodiode and the LED, the infrared LED. And I've used this in the last couple of projects and once again it's finding some use. This time around it's for a tachometer. Uh, I've got a rather crude tachometer. It works. Uh, it likes to run between you know, a few RPM and about 600 RPM. I'm trying to boost the limitations of that right now, but let me show you what I got. Okay, program is running, and we'll get our disk in there. It shows some erroneous readings when you first start it up, but that's about right. You can see with the, as the uh, drill increases in speed, it increases its out, its reading. And there is uh, about 470 some RPM. And there's about the limit. It doesn't like to go much over 5, 600. This is an instantaneous RPM, and you can see it remembers the last value. That's, uh, that's that. Let's uh, take a look at the software. This is a look at the software behind the tachometer, and it's very similar to the last couple of things we've done, where like counters and so forth, where we've used the pi to count stuff. The uh, stuff up here, again, is a description of what's going on, especially with the hardware, so I can remember in a month what I was doing. I come down here, I import the GPIO, it's typical. Uh, I'm also importing the time and the sys functions. And I don't need the sys functions really, I was experimenting with some stuff and I left it in there, but I need the time for, for the timer and uh, some other things. The GPIO, I'm using the board numbering system. I'm going to use pin 11 as output, which I've been doing, and that's going to run the infrared LED. Pin 7 is going to be my input, and that is the infrared photodiode. I've got a couple of variables because we're working with time this time. Uh, in the past, like when you count, you don't have to worry about how much time. But now we're counting per time, and that's important. So we have to keep track of the last time we saw the hit and the current time when we saw the hit because that's, that's important. That's how we're going to know how fast the wheel is turning or whatever we're measuring. And here I just initialize them, no big deal. I just set them to something. So they had to be set to something, so I set them to the current time and then the RPM I set to zero. Let's go down. This is the routine that I'm going to call when I hit the interrupt. When uh, something happens, when something changes on the input pin, this is the routine I'm going to call. Again, very similar to other programs. And it's called events per time. Uh, I globalize a lot of the variables. Uh, if the input channel is less than 0.5, in other words, if the photodiode is blocked, then I I uh, want to do this stuff right here. And the first thing I want to do is I want to keep track of the current time, the time right now when this event happened. And then I'm going to do a little calculation to get the RPM, so it's 1 over the current time minus the last time, so the last time the photodiode was blocked, times 60, because the time comes in in seconds. And then I print the current RPM and the RPM value, and then I store, I, I move the current time into the last time so that the next time this happens I have the last time value to, to calculate with. On down here we have the uh, event detect, this is the interrupt, pin 7 is what it is, the callback this time is this routine up here, and the bounce time I shortened in order to try to get a faster response out of it. I'm only getting about 600-700 RPM reliably, I think I can do a lot better than that. Uh, I may have a hardware issue and i got to work on that one too, but uh, anyway, it's just some experimentation. Uh, once again, the just turn on pin 11, that's the LED. I need to turn it on and I give it some sleep time in order to allow it to come up to full power before I, I start measuring. And here I did a 4x in the range of 0 to 100. You could use a while statement, just say while true and it'll lock into an infinite loop. I don't like to do those, but okay. So then I'm going to come down here and I'm going to print the last RPM that I saw, the last RPM that I measured. So it's kind of like memory. I'm, I'm storing the last value in RPM that I had. And then I'm going to go to sleep just for half a second. 
And basically this isn't really doing anything other than demonstrating that the Pi can be doing two things at once. It can be doing something like this and it can be watching out for the tachometer function. So there's two things that the Pi is doing. It's doing something rather trivial here. It could be doing a lot more and it's waiting for the, the wheel to come around and trigger the, the tachometer function which is basically this thing right here. When the loop runs out, I come down here, I do my typical cleanup, reset the port so I know that everything's back to the initial conditions, and then I print done so that I know that the program finished. Okay, so this is the software. I've got one more piece of hardware I want to show you. I'm trying something a little different, and I think I'm going to save it for another video, but uh, let me show you that. Here's another different, little different setup. As you can see, the detector and the photodiode are at 90 degrees to each other and let's see if we can get it to detect I've been working on this a little bit it's still kind of crude I think it's uh, for another video but we'll give it a shot and see if it's going to detect and as you can see it certainly will detect the flashes across there so it won't detect my spinning wheel yet. I need something shiny like this. And these aren't sensitive enough. I think in the end I'm going to end up changing the hardware. I don't think this passive photodiode is fast enough. So I think that's the issue right now. But anyway, it's just uh, another thing to work on for another uh, another day. Well, I hope you found it interesting and useful in your Raspberry Pi experiments.